So we got midweek mindset call. I have the one and only John Keller on today. And we're going to dialogue back and forth. And I want to, if it's all right with you, John, <clears throat> allow you to just kind of take the floor, so to speak, and share your your experience because you went from, and today we're, again, we'll stay in line with the financial, the fitness, yeah. and then the fun. But with regard to the financial, I think you have an amazing story when it comes to work that you've done from, from out in Dakota to to all of the coaching that you've done and surrounding yourself with amazing athletes and coaches and, and AD. So do you mind just sharing your background? Let's see. Uh, I'm originally from Clap Falls, Oregon, uh, played at Mazama um, high school, later on went and played college, played a little bit, you know, got into the, you know, couple camps and everything in the NFL that didn't last very long, but I got back into coaching and then, uh, Started my coaching in California at a junior college, which was uh, College of the Redwoods, and then back to uh, Sacramento, where I was at American River, and then it kind of took off from there. Then I went to Sacramento State, was there, and then I went to University of Penn, and then it just took off. I went to University of Utah, to Montana, to Oregon, to back to Penn, and then uh, was at Penn for 12 years. Um, as a strength coach, also a football coach, my prior time. And then, uh, you know, in 2012, you know, things changed very, very quick. You know, uh, I had the heart attack and, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, we look at it and everything happens for a reason, you know, and that was one of the reasons why we went to North Dakota after that. So, and then from North Dakota, that's where, you know, we we uh, ended up adopting our daughter, you know, Dana. And, uh, you know, one of the best things, moving to North Dakota. So. And that was out there where you guys met up with Dana. Yeah. And, you know, we started father the, the, um, the nuns at University of Mary asked us to get into foster care and, uh, we got into foster care and then uh, we got Dana and uh, I was ended up working on an oil rig at that time when we got her. So I didn't get to see her until Christmas. And then, uh, you know, then she's been with us ever since. So we finally got to adopt her eight years later. She's full Native American and, uh, you know, so. Always Great. smiling. Yep. Always, always smiling. Very happy girl. All three of you are. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Send out good energy. Now, of those jobs, you mentioned you worked on an oil rig, had a whole bunch of coaching. What did you enjoy the most? Was it more of the oil rig where you're out in elements and, you know, working, working hard? Or was it more of the, the coaching? I think, you know, well, I love coaching. I mean, I, I love every day. I loved everything about it, you know. It, it, uh, but uh, we had to make some decisions when we got to North Dakota. You know, after the heart attack, you know, I had to prove to myself mentally and physically that I could still do it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, a year later, you know, after I couldn't drive, do anything, I, I made a decision that I needed to prove to myself, and I went and worked on an oil rig for a year in North Dakota. Hardest work I've ever done, you know, but uh, it brought me back mentally, physically, and spiritually, really. I mean, uh, the work, the one thing about being on an oil rig is, uh, you know, once my shift was over at 12 hours, you know, I was done. You know, I wasn't going to sit there and talk about work, nothing. <laughs> I got to go home, and that was it. So that was that was a nice thing, because coaching, you're never done. You know, they, you know, 24 hours, you know, you got to be ready for anything. So, um, but it was nice to be on an oil rig where, yeah, I mean, 12 hour shifts over, I'm out of there. <laughs> you know, not sticking around talking about the day's work, you know. So that was, that was, that was what was neat and, and what was nice, you know, and especially the money. You know, money was incredible working on the oil rig. Kind of the opposite of what you would think, or the phrase goes, leave it all on the field, right? At the end of your workday, 
leave it all on the field. You you could leave it all on the field on the oil rig. You couldn't as a coach. Nope. No, you couldn't as a coach. But on the oil rig, it's, you know, you're back in your – once that shift's over, collect your money and you're out. Huh. So. But quite a learning experience, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, the one thing about the oil rig is uh, it doesn't matter whether it's 100 degrees. If it's minus 50, that pipe's still going to move. And the only way an oil rig or any of those gets shut down is if Lifeline can't fly. And those guys have all flew in Vietnam and everywhere else, and they fly through anything. So <laughs> the oil rigs never got shut down. So hmm. uh, we were working out in 50 below. You know, that was that one night I told you about being up in the Derrick Hand and, you know, going up there. And that was, that was the night it proved to myself that I could do anything again. That's cool. Yeah, up in the air, 50 below, you said, 50 feet up in the air. 50 feet up, it was minus 50, wind chill factor. You know, we were still working. Our Derek Hand, who goes up, wouldn't go up that night, said, uh, asked me who, who wanted to go up. Only had to work six hours that night. I was like, I'm, I'm up. <laughs> I'll go up there. But it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was the coldest night I've ever, <laughs> ever been out. You know, your hands are cold, your eyes are freezing, you know, closed and shut. But it's it's one of those things that have proved that, you know, your mind, mental, all that stuff, it, it, you can work through it. So Do anything, like you said. Yep. That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. And second would be the fitness realm. And as a strength coach of a couple of decades, right? Yeah. 20 something years. Yeah. What would you say are three gems you would offer to any athlete? And I know I said collegiate, but say youth, high school, collegiate athlete. What would, what are three gems? Semi pro pro. I, th I think the number one thing is is you have to work your functional strength. You have to get as strong as possible. You know, that that's one of the things before you you do anything else, you know, be functionally strong and then one of the things is, is when you go to college or you go to a strength coach, you know, they're going to teach you the technique, you know, but it's one of those things to go in already being able to squat, being able to deadlift, being able to, you know, do those things, one legged stuff. You know, the biggest thing is, is, uh, you know, I don't think athletes work it enough is the posterior chain. You know, we, we talk about it all the time. The posterior chain is, you know, where where it all is, you know. They don't work their backs. They don't work their delts. They don't work their their glutes, their hams, all those things, you know, your calves, how flexibility, and all those things. But everything ties into the posterior chain. But I think, you know, another thing is, is uh, if you choose to go to college and you choose to, you know, play college athletics, the number one thing, you know, is you better find out what the, who's the strength coach. Because that's who you're going to spend more time with than any other coach is the strength coaches. So, um, and the biggest thing too is be open-minded. You know, yes, you're going to learn different things. You're going to learn those. But once you're there, they're going to teach you the technique that they know what they are, you know. But the biggest thing is everything's the same, you know, just technology, you know, like, um, what am I trying to say? Is uh, verbiage might be different. You know, they may call you know a different thing for a snatch. You know, a different way to pull, but it's all the same. You know, the same thing. So, but those are the three, and, and the bit. You know, find a school where you're gonna play. <laughs> you know, it, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna make that decision to go to the big time D one, or you're gonna go someplace. Find a place where you're gonna play, but you gotta be you gotta be understanding. If you go to a big time school, you may sit. You may sit for two years. You know, you may sit for three years. Who knows? But you know, that's one of the things is when things get hard, when things get difficult, you know, we always talk about head or behind, you know, when you're tired, you're fatigued, all those things, is you gotta reach deep, you know, and uh, find it in your heart. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is the easiest thing to do is quit. You know, quit, 
you know, now it's get in the portal, transfer, everything else, you know. And, uh, you know, learning it from it, even on my side as a coach, the grass ain't greener on the other side. You know, you find a place that you're happy to stay. Yeah. Yeah. Happiness is essential. Yeah. Even if it's a youth or high school player, I, would you still suggest finding a strength coach? Strength coach slap, really a strength coach versus – all right, let me ask you that. Strength coach versus personal trainer for a youth or high school athlete. Well, I think, you know, you got to find somebody that's going to, you know, teach you the functional strength. Mm -hmm. you know, and I just put a bar on your back, you know, teach you all the things, teach you the movement, teach you all those things. But the biggest thing is, is like we talk about it all the time, is if you want to get faster, you want to get – you want to jump higher, you want to be, you know, all these things, you got to get stronger. It's how much force you put through the ground. It's not, you know, gimmick stuff where you're running on ladders and doing all that stuff. That's good for quick feet and stuff like that. But if you want to become a Division One athlete or whatever, you know, you got to become an athlete. You know, you train as an athlete. Don't train sports specific. Because you still got to squat, you still got to press, you still got to do all those, things, you know, bench, you got to incline, you got to one leg, you got to posterior chain, all those things. You're training to be an athlete, you know. And, and the biggest thing is, is we talk about it all the time too, is don't just play one sport, you know. If you look at all the big time professional athletes, women, men, they didn't play just one sport. There were two, three sport athletes, you know. So, you know, play as many as you can. And, and uh, you know, just basically, like we talk about, have fun. <laughs> have fun, learn. But, you know, there's going to be time, you know, adversity. It's life. How are you going to deal with it? You know, so, and that's what we always talk about, right, Chad? Is, is that thing, Adversity, how are you going to deal with it when, when that happens? You know, and that, that's where I, I love watching Navy SEALs, you know, all those things, you know, and how they train and how they train the mind, you know, because your mind is going to give up. Your body is going to give up before your mind, you know. And it's one of those things. Your body can endure so much, so much, but your mind is what's, what's the difference. And you you recognize that when you're working on the oil rig, how much you could possibly withstand more than you thought you could imagine prior to that. And I like your oh, mention God. of the, yeah, I mean, I like your mention of the multi-sport athletes and Bobby Orr, a few years back, I heard him a quote, I forget the exact words to the quote, but he alluded to that too. It's like hockey players got to play baseball yeah. or football or lacrosse yeah. or volleyball or track or something. The multiple sports is where it's at. And when it comes to that fundamental strength, that, in essence, builds solid foundation for any athlete. And you can yeah. only build a, a, a big house, solid house, on a solid foundation. So that fundamental strength is essential. And, and like you said, we have talked about the importance of that. So really, whether it's a strength coach or a personal trainer, whoever is going to focus on that fundamental strength, that baseline strength is someone to be working with, especially at the youth high school, <clears throat> high school age. That's when the bodies are forming and they know how to create a program that is going to be good for the body, good for the stature at that age. And that's, yep. that's pretty important too. Yeah, I think, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, there's great strength coaches, there's great personal trainers. You know, it's, it's one of those things. You've got to find somebody, not not somebody that you're just going to be friends with. You know, you can't, you can't be friends with the strength. You know, you can, you can have that relationship, but it's got to be, it's got to be work. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Is, uh, when I did personal training at, uh, you know, when I, when I was going in Cincinnati, I did it for a little bit. I absolutely hated it because, you know, I, I had clients that would show up and they'd be like, Gosh, I just don't feel like working out. You know, and it was like, I'm supposed to beg you 
to work out, you know, or, you know, it was one of those things is they just, you know, they didn't want, you know, or they wanted to talk the entire time. I just, no, we're squatting. Let's go. Yeah. You know, get down to they business. Just showed me nuts in that, in that, that aspect. You know, I agree 100%. That fundamental fun, uh, foundational strength. And then the, the fun piece, the dopamine. So, on, I mean, you may have a little bit of stress in your life, right? A little bit, yeah. a little bit, a little bit, but not as much as so. Those, do. those days where that little stress surfaces, what are some things that you do to get that natural dopamine secretion in the brain? That after those and and to release, as Todd Durkin talks about, the dose mm-hmm. dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. What do you do to get that that dose of the happy chemicals? Exercise is my number one, you know. The next is hunting, being with my dogs, you know. You know, uh, taking a walk, you know, with my wife, doing those things. But the biggest thing is exercise, but doing something that I enjoy, you know, sitting back, you know. Um, sometimes I just like watching watching uh, YouTube videos of uh, people working out, <laughs> you know, different things, different. Uh, you know, I'm always watching different techniques, different ways, you know, especially as you get older, you got to adapt and you got to be able to do different things. Um, but I think the one thing is, is you never stop learning. You know, you find out new ways every year. But like we were talking about, you know, you can't change the squat. You can't change the, you know, you can change the way you program things. You can change the way the intensity, the, you know, the weight that you're going to do, the, all those things. But you can't change techniques, you know. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that I, if I can tell you to do is master the technique. And uh, the best way to do that is muscle mind connection. You know, it's taken me 20 something years to learn how to do that muscle mind connection. I mean, I used to do curls all the time and not feel a thing. Now I can take a 15 pound dumbbell or a 10 and feel it fine. You know, actually feel the muscle, feel the bicep. You know, squeezing, the traction, everything, you know, that's, and, and it's just one of those things. It's, it's a learning, it's a learning process. Yeah. And work guys can bring you into the moment. People talk about mindfulness and meditation and finding your Zen. I mean, you can find that Zen. You can be in that space of being fully mindful when you're working out, especially when you're lifting heavier loads. You know, for those who are able to. That was one of the things is, uh, you know, like I told you, I, you know, I did that 800 pound squat in the USAPL powerlifting me. But the biggest thing was, is I probably before that day that I took that one squat, I probably squatted that a thousand times in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever I go for a walk, I go anywhere, you know, I just set up how I set up, how I perform that squat. You know everything, but I, I, you know, like I was telling you, you know, my thing is so powerful. You know, I used to be able to sit there and play a whole game of football in my in my mind. You know how I'm going to block that guy. How I'm, you know, if if I if I get, you know, if he beats me, how am I going to react? How am I going to counter? You know all those things. Um, you know the mind is so powerful. And what's interesting is that we can. We can do that on a day-to-day. We can do that on a daily basis. Like you can go to bed visualizing how your morning is going to go from the time you open your eyes. And then you can you can find that that mindful space where you're you're visualizing how your day is going to go when when you do wake your wake up in the morning. You can visualize how your day is going to go, and mm-hmm. it doesn't take very long. It certainly can. But when you get to that point where you're visualizing things, it's kind of amazing in that that you get little nudges and hunches and people all of a sudden come into focus that you know, how did that person possibly end up here? And then you kind of trail how you met that person and you're like, how on earth did this come to be? And I have friends who who visualize and they visualize manifestation and and it's it's pretty fascinating. I mean I, you and I, I mean, we met a month and a half ago or so. I think 
Um, your wife Patty was playing pickleball. Yeah. Your daughter was there. She mentioned you. Just so happened that Marlene and I, my wife and I went back to play. You were there, and then we just it was just a, a connection. It's like you can send these these impulses out to the universe and all of a sudden people show up. It's kind of fascinating when you do dip into that visualization and manifestation realm. And like you were saying, I think, you know, it's one of those things is we had a connection right away. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we could talk, you know, <laughs> it was like the other day when we were at the football game, how we were talking, you know, we just threw ideas off each other. And it's yeah. a flow. Have you read the book Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? I haven't read that. So it's a it's a really good book. And people, I think some people are, you know, that word rich for some people, it's like a it's like a four letter word, which it is, but you, you follow me. But when it comes to being rich, being rich in life is defined by different people in different ways. So, but in this book, I think it's chapter six. Don't quote me on that. He talks about the mastermind and we've all heard of masterminds. We've heard of brainstorming groups, but in essence, when two people come together and they start talking about a topic two or more people that start talking about a topic that they're both fascinated by, they're both passionate about, there's this imaginary third brain that forms or imaginary additional brain that forms and they start pulling ideas off of that brain. And when you and you're right, when you and I get together, we start talking and all of a sudden, you know, we're both coming up with ideas and it's, it's evolving. Same yeah. thing with, with Steve over at, over at the school, you know, yep. first time I ever met him and it was all of a sudden this, it morphed into this conversation about biology, about physiology, about strength training, strength and conditioning and, and how to work with athletes. And, and same as we've been talking about, say, set that fundamental strength, create that fundamental, fundamental strength platform. So I think you would really enjoy that book. I'm pretty sure you can get it on YouTube for free and just listen to it while you're working out. Okay. But yeah. That mastermind concept is really big. And last week when we were on here with, with Pam, it was the same type of thing where we were just sharing ideas. The conversation was flowing and it just, it just feels natural. It feels pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you said, it's natural. It's not, you're trying to, uh, just come up with topics, you know, <laughs> and just talk to talk, you know, that that's one of the things is, uh, you know, I've enjoyed all our talks. So. Yeah. And I've learned a lot, man. I've learned a lot from you. But, and then, you, I mean, there's, there are times where you're going to meet people and it's, it doesn't flow as nicely and it maybe take a little longer to get to that flow or it just doesn't end up flowing at all. And that's perfectly fine too. But oh, yeah. it is, it is nice when you can pull those ideas. Cause I, I do look forward to to what we were talking about presenting, you know, presenting yeah. ideas and concepts and and really get to the the nitty gritty of getting these youth youth high school collegiate athletes as strong as they can get at base, and yep. then build upon that when it comes to their sport. Sorry, my my thing keeps bouncing around because my I keep hitting the platform that the computer's standing on. So I hope people people aren't getting motion sickness, but so. Yeah, that was the dopamine piece, and and how neat does it feel when you're working with your athletes, and they are you're cueing them, they're getting the mechanics down, they're putting up heavy loads, and then they rack the weight and they look at you and they say, "Wow, yeah. how good does that feel?" The biggest thing is is when you start seeing it, it relate onto the field, you know, or on the court, and you start seeing. Like um, when we were at Penn, we uh, squatted all season long with basketball until we got to the to the tournament time, and everybody was like, and and our coach, head coach, would be like, "Give me certain days where we'd kill them." And then you know, heavy squats, we were squatting with chains, we were doing all those things, and um, it was crazy because they they were like, they didn't know, but come towards tournament time when we stopped squatting them and everything else, they recovered. Their legs were full. They were strong. And we went into the tournament, you know, ready to go. Um, but that was one of the things is watching, you know, football players, you know, seeing it on the field where, you know, they, you know, cause they're, 
they're not going to be professional lifters. You know, if you can, if you can clean and you can understand the purpose of a triple extension of why you're doing it instead of just reverse curling, you know, if you can get that pop of the hips. So when you're driving somebody off the ball, you know, you're coming through, you know, you see that on the field and they're like, man, coach is starting to work, you know, or, you know, you see a, a gymnast, you know, that's coming off the beam, powerful landing, you know, everything's strong. Everything looks good. You know, the biggest thing is like we talk about, you can't prevent every injury, but that's the main reason why you train is to prevent, you know, you can't, you can't prevent it, but if it happens, you know, but a lot of times people are strong enough, you know, and that was one of the things that, you know, my doctors were saying about, you know, my thing, you know, when I had the heart attack, I probably would have died if I wasn't as strong as I was. I wouldn't have made it through that night. Coded three more times that night. Pretty much told my wife, he's not going to, if he makes it, it's going to be, you know, 10% chance. You know, woke up six days later. They didn't even know if I'd be able to walk, talk, none of that. You know, I do have significant damage of the heart, you know, which is, uh, you know, now I have like a 70-year-old heart. But they're still amazed as how I'm not on a, you know, on a couch taking pills. And, you know, I I contributed that to being strong, still working out, doing those things, squatting, pressing, doing all those things, you know. So I think the stronger you are, you can endure. Absolutely. And it's a lot of the research shows that even with distance runners, with endurance athletes, it's important to have that same base of strength. Oh, yeah. so back in the day, it was, you know, runners run. Yeah. Cyclist cycle. But any, any cyclist, any endurance athlete that I work with, I'm making sure. And that's one of my first questions is what do you do for strength training outside of your sport or outside of your event? And nine times out of 10, it's not much. So it's, it's about doing exactly what you're doing for youth high school collegiate athletes and just at whatever stage they're at, setting that foundation and getting them into some type of strength training routine where you're going over the fundamentals and then allowing them to progress from there and scheduling it so that it's not offsetting their endurance training. But the strength is, is very, very important. That's like when I was doing the wrestlers, wrestlers, you know, they want to go hundred miles per hour. They want to do as much volume as possible. We did the Wendler, the five, three, two, one that killed them. <laughs> you know, once you, once you got into the one, they hated it, but they could see later on how much stronger they really got. You know, they, you know, sometimes you tell them, you know, you're going to do five sets of one today. You know, they would be like, what? They would rather do five sets of 20, five sets of 10. You know, it's just that mindset of a wrestler. Mm -hmm. But when you started getting them up in volume, though, five sets of one, it, you know, really, you know, you got a 123 pounder, you know, having to deadlift 315, three, 375 or three sets of one, five sets of one. It, it's kind of taxing. <laughs> But they, you know, they would do, you know, they probably deadlift sometimes, and then I'd see them over doing dips. So I'd be okay. <laughs> well, thank you, John. I appreciate you popping on here. Appreciate the information that you're sharing, and and we'll yeah. we'll keep these going. Like I said, Taylor will be back next week, and and I like this this forum where we, it's a conversation. I'll chat with Taylor about about what we'll do from here on out, and and just keep the vibe going. You know, the key yeah. is to have that that middle of the week mindset, check in, reset if you need a reset, to talk, little finance, little fitness, little fun. And uh appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming on. Yep. So appreciate you. All right. You have a good one. Hey, have a good rest of the night. Thank you. All right, you too.